Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I'm Vincent, a developer on the Microsoft Graph SDK team. I should have been joined by Mesa, um, a program manager on our team as well, but unfortunately she's having power issues. And today we're here to talk about our new preview Microsoft Graph Go SDK. Um, and we'll see how it works and what value it provides to you. If you don't write any Go code, don't run away. Just uh, stay here, listen in, and see if you have any Go developer friends so you can tell them about this new awesome SDK. We don't have a lot of slides, so I'll, I'll go through this uh, quickly. Why would you use this, this new Go SDK or what does it provide for you? Um, well, it has a few key benefits that you can use as a Go developer. First off, the authentication. It is based off Azure Identity and brings support for multiple authentication flows like the authorization code, the browser interactive, the client credentials or a client certificate uh, flow. Um, also, it can pull the authentication from the environment variables, from a device code flow, which I'm going to be showing in a couple of minutes, a username password, or even a managed identity if you're running off an Azure service like Azure Web Apps or or Azure Functions and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so all of that is provided and supported from day one thanks to Azure Identity, which our, our SDK relies on, and it allows you to support any scenario you might be building applications for, whether you are on the backend service or on a desktop application or on a mobile application. Next up, we do provide, thanks to the new Microsoft Graph Go SDK, uh, a Fluent Style API that I'm going to be demonstrating in a couple of minutes. And we provide that uh, API for both the V1 endpoints as well as the beta endpoints. And both those SDKs, the V1 SDK and the beta SDK, can be used together in the same application. That, so that allows you to use the beta SDK for only the things that are only available in beta, and you, so this way you are on the edge and trying the new endpoints and trying the new APIs that are offered by the different product teams. And then you can revert to the V1 SDK that talks to the V1 APIs for all your quote unquote production uh, work that needs to be more uh, reliable. Um, it comes with uh, models uh, for all the different entities we have on Microsoft Graph, and it also handles for you, of course, uh, serialization and deserialization of the payloads um, uh, for you automatically. So those are some of the other benefits you get from the Microsoft Graph Go SDK. On top of all of that, we also have a middleware pipeline that handles uh, cross-cutting concerns like, well, if there is an error, should we retry? Should we back off exponentially if, uh, if Microsoft Graph is busy and all those kind of things? So that's automatically handled for you. You don't need to implement that yourself anymore. We also have a redirect handler because for some API calls, your client is actually being redirected to another service like SharePoint, OneDrive, and so on and so forth. Well, um, we do have a handler that's available from day one. And of course, we're planning to add uh, more handlers as we uh, move through the preview and as we uh, move towards GA to provide a better uh, uh, experience to the uh, SDK users. And with that, that's pretty much all the slides we have for now. So let's jump in the demo. Um, so here I already run my Go application and I'm using the device code flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through uh, the application and then I'm going to show you the code. Um, here we go. So I'm going to go uh, to microsoft.com slash device login, paste in the code, select my account, Click OK. That's the same consent experience that Arpita was telling us about in the first demo. Of course, I'm not verified because I'm not a trustworthy developer at this point. And that's it. Our application is authenticated. So what our application will do, it will list out the first 10 messages and it will also send an email and we'll get back to that uh, from the code. But before we jump into the code, um, usually when you want to get started with a new SDK or with a new technology, well, you're looking for documentation. Another great thing we put together as a team, thanks to Jason and other team members, is all the get started um, 
uh, section for the uh, SDKs in the public documentation here has been updated to include all the Go instructions. So how do you install the Go SDK, for example, or how do you create a Go client with the authentication set up for you, for example. And also for each and every API endpoint, we now have uh, Go snippets and Go samples available for you, which you can also see in the Graph Explorer. So if you go to uh, aka.ms slash GE, you will go to the Graph Explorer that you've probably seen many times at this point, and you can go there to uh, execute different requests again against Microsoft Graph. And if you run the query, and then if you go over to the response tab, uh, the response section, click on the code snippet tab, and then on the go tab, you now have the equivalent code for that specific um, API call that is available. So if I change for example, to go to slash me slash messages to get the uh, messages for the current user. Same thing, I will get the Go code snippet. Um, that is the reflection of that specific API call. So now, if we jump into the code of my application to show you how it's built, um, the first thing, of course, is the imports. I will have to import Azure Identity here, as well as the Microsoft Graph SDK and a few sub modules under the Microsoft Graph SDK to get things like what are the messages, how do you send an email, and all those different things. Then if we move on to that section here, I'm actually creating a client all the way through here. So the first few lines here are actually using Azure Identity to set up a device code credential. This is what we've uh, uh, just seen earlier, where the application will say, hey, go to that URL, paste that code, go through the authentication event consent, and then come back to the applications once you're done. This is great for um, um, uh, devices or application surfaces that do not have a uh, great user input experience like IoT devices, like console applications like I'm just showing you, or uh, wearables or stuff like that. Of course, as I already said, we support a number of different um, uh, credentials like, like the interactive browser one, the authorization code, and so on and so forth to uh, allow you to authenticate almost the same way across multiple uh, scenarios and use the SDK the exact same way. The next stop here is to create a new uh, identity authentication provider. So this is where we pass in the credentials which we've just built, as well as the scopes we're going to be using. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's always better. Here I'm using gradual consent, where I'll say for this specific piece of code, I just need mail.read and mail.send. So this is what I'm going to be uh, re uh, requesting. Of course, you can also do it the other way around, where you register all your scopes on your application registration and don't provide anything here. And what's going to happen is that you will have uh, the consent go through all the scopes that are registered within the application directly instead. Once I have that, I can build my request adapter that will translate my Fluent API request into actual HTTP request using the authentication provider we've just built to authenticate the request. And I can feed that into my graph uh, service client. And the graph service client itself will be the entry point for the uh, Fluent API. So now, if we move to actual API calls, once we've set up everything here, um, we do have one first thing we're doing here. We're doing client.me to get the current user who's authenticated, dot messages to get their messages, dot get to list all the messages that are available. But if we look above a little bit, I'm also uh, providing a filter to say, I only want the messages that start with major update. For example, I don't want the other messages. I just want those messages that start with that. And this is how uh, we get started. So automatically, the Go SDK will provide you types for the query parameters and also the ability to set the request headers and a few other things. And you can use that when you execute the request to kind of narrow down your request to get the exact specific things that you use like to get. When I get that, that response, what I'm doing is I'm just iterating for the messages to display their receive date time and their subject as I've seen, uh, as I've shown in the application. The next stop uh, and the next thing we're doing, we're actually posting a new message. So here I'm using the models that are generated by, uh, are available through the Go SDK, and I'm creating a new message. I'm setting the subject, and then within the message, I'm setting the uh, body of a message with some kind of content. Uh, we support enumerations, we support 
the different values here. And then on the message, I'm also setting the recipients here, where we are setting the new email address for the recipient, which we're putting into a collection for the message. And once we've done all of that, we put the body again in the request options like we've done earlier for the, the filter query. Instead, here we're setting the, uh, the body instead. And using the Fluent API, I'm doing client.me.sendmail to send to send a new email dot post with options which do contain my uh, body and that's it then we return the application and and and, and we're done so if we go over the browser here, and if we look at the inbox, you'll see that I've uh, received a non-delivery reply. This is because the email I'm, I'm sending, uh, the email address I'm sending the email to does not exist, but this is fine. The API call worked. I was able to send an email. The service um, actually got the email, sent it to the distant server, which said, hey, I don't have that email address and replied to us. But basically um, uh, the whole loop is completed here. And with that, I know we have a couple of minutes left, so I'll go back to the slides really quickly to talk about a few things and give you a few useful links. So if you want to get started, uh, you should go over to our public documentation, of course, because you'll find how to get started and all the snippets, but you can also go to our GitHub repositories. So github.com slash Microsoft Graph slash MS Graph dash SDK dash go or MS Graph dash beta dash SDK dash go for the beta SDK. Again, those can be used uh, together in an application if you need to. We also have a blog post that goes through most of the demonstration that I've uh, um, put together here and explain all the other benefits of the Go SDK we haven't talked about today. This is available at aka.ms slash preview dash go v1. And of course, if you have questions, well, you can always reach out on the uh, repositories for the Go SDK, but you can also go to um, uh, Microsoft Q&A at aka.ms slash ask graph SDK all attached. And with that, thank you very much from both Mesa who could not be with us today because of missing electricity and uh, myself. Thank you very much. Back to you, Seb. Seb. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vince. Uh, was great to see some Go love happening um, in some of our SDKs. Thank you.